Now the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he got to a certain point, the army camped. And when the army camped, he took Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And he said, let's go and find out now. We need to know the numbers of these people, what type of weapons they have and so on. So what happened is, they hadn't even known exactly where Quraysh was. They saw a man, just the two of them, as they moved, they went into the desert on their own. They saw an old Arab Bedouin man and they told him, where are the Muslims? Good question. Look at how the question is asked. This is actually now a, a tactic to get news, to get information, because now this is a war situation. Where are the Muslims? He says, who are you? So they said, you tell us where the Muslims are, then we tell you who we are. So he says, okay. No, he didn't say, who are you? He said, where are you from? That was the question. Where are you from? So they said, you tell us what we want to know, then we tell you what you want to know. So he says, okay, the Muslims, they left Medina on such and such a day. There were so many of them and they headed to a certain place. They were seen in this place on this day. And today, as we speak, they should be in this place. And it was so accurate, subhanAllah, so accurate, shocking. So then they said, oh, is that the case? Okay, what about the Meccans? Where are they? The people of Mecca, Quraysh. He said, as for Quraysh, they got the news and this is how they prepared. They went there, they went there, they did this, the army. They should be at this place right now, which was not very far at all. So then they said, he said, right, now where are you from? So the Prophet ﷺ looks at him and says, we are from water. And they walked away. Quickly, the two of them went away. Now, we are all from water. We were created from water and dust, which was mixed together and it became clay. So because he said, where are you from? He says, we are from water. So Rasulullah ﷺ went away immediately so that no further questions would be asked. And he says, which water? The water of Iraq? Or the... They didn't answer anything. They just carried on. Because if they waited, a lie would have been necessitated. And if someone lied because of war, it wasn't wrong. It's not wrong in the Sharia. If it's a war, then subhanallah, you don't need to give your enemy the information. But they knew that if we are going to tell him anything besides this, there's going to be a problem. So subhanallah, they went away and they found out they, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had one powerful habit. He never ever got people worried and excited, not once. He knew the news. He knew how serious everything was. But he always calmed the people down. Subhanallah. Unlike today, we hear something minute. We blow it up so big and we make like the house is burnt down before we even, subhanallah, open our mouths. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ the hypocrites, whenever news of fear or safety, good or bad, comes to them, they quickly broadcast it. The word adha'u, for your information, idha'a refers to broadcasting. You see, al idha'a, it means that which is broadcasted. Radio and television is included in that which is broadcasted. So, here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking of the hypocrites and their quality, whenever there is some piece of information that is of importance, whether it is to do with security or whether it is to do with goodness, peace, harm or difficulty or goodness, it is quickly broadcasted before it is taken to those with sound knowledge. Had they taken that news to the messenger or to those who were in authority, those with sound intellect above them, they would have known how to deal with the news. So this is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took this and he went back to his army and then they started preparing. And as they were preparing, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaking to them, giving them information, telling them what they would like to do. We want to go to Badr and we will inshallah settle at a specific place and so on. Inshallah, we will get to that in a few moments. But in the meantime, the Prophet ﷺ sent more people to find out a little bit more of the information. And from amongst them, he sent Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiallahu anhu. One narration says, with them was Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu. 
they rushed in the evening to what was known as Ma'u Badr, the place where water, the water was in Badr. Now, in Badr, there were a few places where there was water. There was water close to where the Muslims were and water a little bit further away. So, when Ali ibn Abi Talib and his Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas and Zubair ibn al-Awwam anhum went to this water, they found two youngsters filling the uh, containers for Quraysh to take back water. So they got hold of these youngsters and brought them back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amazing. These two youngsters are filling water. They were asked questions. They were trying to evade. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reading salah. When he completed, he said, look, we know, we want you to tell us, where is Quraysh? The two boys looked, young little boys, and they said, well, they're just here on the other side. The other side of the valley which means very, very close. And we are here to collect their water. How many are they? So the young boys say, we don't know how many they are. Now the Prophet wasallam, even more intelligent than Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan had to check the droppings of the camel. The Prophet wasallam says, how many camels do they slaughter a day for food? So they said, one day nine, one day ten. The Prophet ﷺ looks at his companions and says, that means they are between 900 and 1,000. Subhanallah. Look at the figure. Because 100 people eat from one camel. That's the average. So if they have nine one day, ten the other day, perhaps they are nine, 950 to 1,000. 1,000 men. Look at the intelligence. He understood immediately. Then he asked them, and who from amongst Quraysh is there? They said, all the big boys, meaning all the leaders of Quraysh are there. Abu Jahal is there, Umayyah bin Khalaf is there, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah is there. Subhanallah. I would say, wow, all the names are there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Imagine, now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looks at his companions and he says, this is Quraysh, Allah has brought them to you with their leaders. They have come all the way here. The leaders have come. These are the same people who harmed us. These are the same people who attacked us. These are the same people who murdered from amongst us. These are the ones who usurped our wealth. Now, when we say these type of things, it boils the blood. It makes people want to go and get back whatever was there. Subhanallah. Imagine a man who has harassed you for years on end and one day it's just you and him and you can see that you're much more muscular than he is. You look at him, he's trying to run away. What do you do? You're so happy that at least he's so close. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. With that, we need to remember, without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing was going to happen because 313 on one hand and almost 1,000, perhaps more than 1,000 strong on the other. And they were well equipped. The difficulty was they were having a ball of a time in Badr. Those mushriks, what were they doing? Every time Abu Jahl said, we will camp there for three nights. That's what he said. He says, we'll enjoy. We'll take our women. They took women with lots of alcohol. Drinking, dancing, enjoying. Is that what war is all about? If you take a look at Shaitan, Shaitan gets hold of people exactly how he got hold of the people in the past. Wine and women, in the sense that they want people dancing around them, they want to see, they want to commit adultery, they want to drink alcohol and so on. May Allah safeguard us, really. From that time, it resulted in their failure. And to this day, Anyone who has those habits, they can never ever lead a happy life, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim. If a person is into wine and women and so on, their life is a mess. It will have to be a mess. And if it is not yet a mess, it's going to be a mess. So that is something that is a plan from the very beginning of shaitan in order to lead us astray. May Allah protect us and may he protect our families, our brothers and sisters, and may he protect our children as well. So this was Abu Jahl. And what he did was something shocking, drinking, and he was loud mouth, very loud, saying statements, very, very bad statements. We'll come to one of them in a few moments. But in the meantime, the Prophet wasallam, when he realized how close these people were, he issued an instruction to his companions. What was the instruction? Cut off all the bells from the necks of the camels. All the bells were cut off. Why? Very simple. If the bells are on the necks of the camels, like nowadays you find bells on the necks of some of the cattle so that they are not lost. From a distance you can hear camel. 
people would be able to know there's the camels this is where it is they will know direction in this way the ropes are cut no one knows which direction it is in no one knows how many they are because you can't hear the bells ringing and so on number one number two is he told his companions we will proceed we will progress he did not inform them exactly where where they will proceed and progress we said this at the beginning and we're repeating it now because this happened many times he only released at every level how much they needed to know that's all so at a certain point okay we're going there when they get there we are now going there when they get there we are now going there subhanallah so that news didn't fly and news didn't go to the others uh, and to the enemy and so that the enemy would not be able to have information and intelligence gathered against the muslims and thereafter the muslims decided rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the following day decided that let us all go and we will stop at the water of badr the closest water that we have the closest water badr let's stop there so that we can have water whilst the war is going on and so when they got there subhanallah there was a sahabi known as al-habbab ibn al-munzir radiyallahu anhu he looks at the messenger this man was intelligent he had taken part in some wars in the past he looks at rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have camped the army here this is the close water to us there is another water further down is it revelation from allah and instruction that we cannot go against that you have made us camp here with or is it just an opinion that can be changed in the sense that could we have a say could we suggest something so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says no it is not a must that we have to be here we've just camped here so he says in that case i have an opinion what is your opinion oh habbab my opinion is let us go to the other water so we will have this water as well as the other water and quraish will have no water so when they come in they will have no water at all another thing is the soil here is not fit for our horses in case it rains what will happen the horses will actually slip if we go further up there there is a little bit of sand if it rains or there is water and so on we will be able to have the horses very steady on the ground so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam immediately agreed with this opinion and he took the entire army and told them let's get there and so they proceeded to the next water and now they had control of all the water in badr so there was no ways that quraish would get water and then subhanallah on one hand the eve of the battle the mushriks are busy dancing they busy enjoying they busy drinking and they are certain that they're going to win because they know how much power they have they don't have a doubt abu jahl is convinced that tomorrow we're going to win convinced and they don't have a doubt so they really enjoying drinking so much now you and i know that when there is a person who has drunk so much the following morning he gets up with half a you know half an eye this way that way probably looking at you with one eye and so on and he sees two three people not realizing exactly which one is the real person and which one is just the double because of the eye this happens i don't know in my part of the world they call it babalas i don't know what they call it here <laughs> may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us so a person comes and these people were drinking that same drink was one of the reasons of their downfall and it was a means that Allah had chosen for their downfall subhanallah and in the meantime the muslims they were concerned they were making dua they were engaged in prayer they were really at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sa'd ibn mu'ad tells rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah let us build for you a headquarters here so they built at one place they it is known as al arish up to today if you go to badr there is a masjid built on that location known as masjid al arish that is where the command center was they had just built a little structure rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would sit inside there and when the war began he came out obviously but this was just for the time that they had camped in badr and they had camped for several days even after the battle they camped for another 3 days so that place al arish was built in the meantime very quickly see the army gets together they built this place beautifully mashallah and sa'd ibn mu'adh was standing out there with some of his men making sure no one goes in abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were in this arish this little command center and in the meantime the muslims are given a gift by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listen to what allah says 
إذ يغشيكم النعاس أمنة منه وينزل عليكم من السماء ماء ليطهركم به ويذهب عنكم رجز الشيطان وليربط على قلوبكم ويثبت به الأقدام الله says remember the time that the yawning overtook you they actually fell off to sleep imagine people are waiting the enemy is there who would sleep people would be wide awake waiting to say the following morning we're going to fight and here you have sleep everybody slept the muslims had a good sleep mashallah allah says we blessed you with a good sleep and above that we caused the rain to fall so much so that the following morning the valley had water in it what happened that Sahabi Al-Habbab ibn Al-Mundhir, he was correct. The soil, the sand was now good enough for the horses to tread over. Whereas it had been quicksand the previous day. But now that it was all wet, it was beautiful because the horses could move on it. And Quraysh were in a place where they suffered in the night. Their horses couldn't even move because of the water. The opposite, subhanallah. And they didn't have water to drink. And on this side, it rained, subhanallah. And this is Allah's gift. And Allah says, we sent you the water for it to be a cleansing for you. And for the, the, the whispers of the devil to go, people became very, very uh, energetic. And they were looking forward to the next day because of the rain. Rain freshens you up, mashallah. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and in order for you to be steadfast, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this was a gift. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given. Another thing, Allah showed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a dream. In his dream, Allah says, إِذْ يُرِيكَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنَامِكَ قَلِيلًا We showed their number to you in your dream as very little. So in the dream, Allah showed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the number of the mushriks, very very little, very little. Now one might say the dreams of the prophets are all true. So why is it that he saw them little when they were so big? No. Compared to the iman that was on one side, they were nil on the other side. Allahu Akbar. They were nothing. So it's not the figures. It is actually the strength. The strength given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to iman. So Allah showed him that they are very, very little. وَلَوْ أَرَاكَهُمْ كَثِيرًا لَفَشِلْتُمْ وَلَتَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ سَلَّمْ Allah says, if we had showed you that they were so large in number, perhaps there would have been a dispute, perhaps, perhaps you may not have wanted to fight them and so on. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you. So this was a dream that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had that eve. And then, subhanallah, on the other hand, one man also saw a dream. His name was Juhaym ibn Salt. He was from amongst the mushriks, one of those people of Abu Jahl. He had a dream. That dream was also a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He dreamt that a man came to him on a horse and with a little camel of his. And he says, such and such a person is already killed. Such a person is killed. Such a person is murdered. Such a person is murdered. Who were the names? Abu Jahl, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, Utbah ibn Rabia. These people are already murdered. So this man goes to Abu Jahl and he tells him, hey, I saw a dream. And in the dream, I saw that this man comes and tells me, you are murdered. Uh, the other one is executed. Umayyah ibn Khalaf is executed. Utbah ibn Rabi'ah. And he took the names. Abu Jahl began to laugh. Obviously half drunk. The man doesn't know what he's saying. And he starts laughing. He says, who do you think you are? Tomorrow we will show you who's going to win. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Wallahi, alcohol is something we should stay very, very far from, very far. It is totally prohibited. It is known as one of the root causes of most other ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So the following day, subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu got the people ready. And he started advising them. He read for them verses. He warned them. He gave them lots of advice. And he told them to be disciplined in war and to listen to the instructions of the commander who was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, we have been taught to make saf, sufuf. Inna Allah yuhibbu alladheena yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffa 
كَأَنَّهُ بُنْيَانٌ مَرْصُوصٌ Allah loves those whom when they are on the battlefield and they are fighting, they are in rows. Rows like the rows of Salah, subhanallah. So there was a row, the first row was made of those who were the, the archers, those who would actually use their bows and arrows, their arrows and spears to attack. And he said, we don't have that many spears, so don't waste them. And at the same time, you wait until they come right to us. When they are very close to us, then you hit them with the spears. And the others, the next row was those with, those with swords. He said, as for you, don't remove your swords. Until they are right in your midst, then you take your swords out. Subhanallah. And they didn't have the question of horsemen because there were only two. And they were told, instructed very carefully by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what had happened is, as the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua, Allah responded his dua. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Oh Allah, help us, assist us. You promised us assistance. We are asking you for help, Ya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ يُوحِي رَبُّكَ إِلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَنِّي مَعَكُمْ In fact, there is a verse slightly before that where Allah says, إِذْ تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ أَنِّي مُمِدُّكُمْ بِأَلْفٍ مِّنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُرْدِفِينَ Remember when you were seeking the help of Allah and Allah responded you saying, we are sending you 1,000 angels to help you. The following day, or when the battle was about to commence, in fact, the verses came down. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are sending you, how would you like it if we sent you 3,000 angels? And then he says, we are sending you 5,000 angels if you fear Allah and so on. And wallahi, if you look at Sahih al-Bukhari, you open the book, there is a bab. A bab meaning a chapter. The chapter is named the chapter of the participation of the angels in the battle of Badr. And the ahadith, there are a few ahadith that are made mention of. So the angels also took part in this battle of Badr. Now, at that time, the battles used to always commence with a duel. You know, people who would uh, have a sword fight. So three of the people of Quraysh came out. When Quraysh had come in, Quraysh walked to a specific spot. The Muslims walked to a specific spot and they were all in lines. Quraysh was haphazard. First time in the history they are witnessing people drawing lines, you know, making lines and people all lined up. Quraysh was surprised. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went with his spear, straightening the safs, straight like the saf of salah. The rows were made straight and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then selected three people to go out to face the three whom Quraysh had picked up. Whom did they pick up? They picked up Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, and Al-Walid ibn Utbah. Those three had come up. Al-Walid was a youngster. The other two were older people. On this side, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib came out. And we have Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu who came out, and Ubaidah ibn Al-Harith radiallahu anhu who came out. And subhanallah, it started off with a few words, and then these, the armies, the two of them watch. They wait for the duel to complete, and then they all start fighting. So what happened as the duel commenced, Hamza radiallahu anhu in no time put an end to Shayba ibn Rabi'ah. And Ali radiallahu anhu in no time executed al-Walid. And as for Ubaidah ibn al-Harith, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah gave him a difficult time and struck him, but he was struck as well. And then Hamza and Ali radiallahu anhu came to his assistance and this man was executed as well. Quraysh was shocked. They were shocked. Their leaders were gone. Some of them. And as they were shocked, you now find that the two armies began. In fact, Quraysh began to run towards the Muslims. The Muslims were just waiting exactly where they were. When they got to a specific point, they were instructed to remove their spears and arrows. They removed them. Then they were instructed to fire. When they fired, so many of Quraysh were already gone. Subhanallah. Just by that. And as they went, the horsemen of Quraysh began to come. They fired again. A lot of the horses dropped. And thereafter, subhanallah, the war began. 
and the greatest loss of the kuffar of Quraysh. It is shocking. The leaders of Quraysh, one by one, they were executed by the same people whom they had troubled and harassed over time. There are some beautiful incidents of how some young boys took part in this war and they had a very, very big impact and effect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Inshallah, tomorrow we will continue. We leave you in that suspense. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tomorrow we will continue with the rest of the battle. Until then, we say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. سبحان الله بحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك. Unlock spiritual enrichment with One Islam TV app. Immerse yourself in a unique experience that is music free, fully halal, and continuously updated with fresh content daily. Enjoy a user friendly experience with features that allow you to save your favorite videos, create personalized playlists, and download and watch your content offline. Download the One Islam TV app now and embark on a transformative journey where faith and entertainment unite.